Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I'm still working on the whole orbital thing, but we've got new engines to work with and looking at them I'm a little bit concerned because here we have the H1 and RS27 and I, I have added in FASA's engines and I'm not seeing the FASA variant of that. In other words, FASA, the mod, has an H1 model and it's not showing up. In 0 .90 it showed up, we had two versions. We had this version and we had the FASA one with, that looks better. Uh, here we only have this version and that leads me to believe that uh, the FASA versions are not going to show up in which case A, I probably shouldn't have them in because they take extra RAM. Uh, B, I'm also worried about whether I'm going to see the lunar module ascent and descent engines which of course are in the FASA pack and I'm not too sure I have other models of so and those are very important engines for me I was missing them in point nine zero I, I had them in but uh, I, they didn't show up here ever uh, so worried about the selection of engines I might eventually get because certain engines I expected to be showing up aren't but uh, anyway, we certainly have enough engine power to get to orbit. I don't want to make a very expensive rocket right now, though. This is definitely not RP-0. Okay, so, well, that's fine. That's, that's expected as well. Uh, that's uh, for other purposes. Okay, so... Yeah, let me take a look at what I, I can cook up and how much it would cost. But uh, looking at it, actually... These engines cost a lot just to unlock. Maybe I should hold off until I, I get to orbit. Let's see what what uh, rockets we have building right now. By the way, I've updated all the mods that needed updating, and so a lot of mods have been updated, including real fuels, fair mirror space, for instance. So yeah, there are things that have happened and may change the way other things act, and I'm a little bit worried about that but that probably won't affect us too much at this stage. I took a look at the test flight configs and technically the Vanguard should be controlled by test flight. In other words, we should have been getting, you know, failures on the Vanguard engine as well. It's one of the engines that is configured by that. So I don't understand why that wasn't happening. And I'm also somewhat worried that now that I've updated everything, it'll start happening, which is going to be interesting. Now we have this lofty one in storage. I'm going to roll that out and let's see how that works. Now last time we just completely lost control of this. There is no one in the cockpit. Uh, we do have a remote controller. Hopefully that will work this time. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, yep, engine ignition. And clap release. Oh, it's going up. Okay, so it, it works this time. Okay, very good, very good. Alright, let's see if it can get into a suborbital sub flight and then uh, the capsule survive. That's quite a tall order. So we're basically going Mercury Redstone here. I don't know if this kind of cockpit is okay for that. I mean, the Gemini capsule was sort of arranged like a cockpit. That should be fine, right? I'm going to decree that it's probably safer for this to splash down than hit land. So I am going to execute this and have it uh, tilt just a little bit. Oh, maybe that was not such a good idea. It's wiggling a lot. Hmm. Oh, well, we've got some overheating on the cockpit. Maybe caps lock will uh, help solve this rocking motion problem. Or is it the cockpit or the parachutes? I think it's the cockpit itself. Well, above 5 G's now. I think we'll shut it down here. We've got an apoapsis of 214, which is more than enough. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to separate off, see how that works. 
Okay. And then uh, I'm going to use RCS to hopefully boost forward. Hmm. Oh, oh, caps locks on. There we go. There we go. Uh, Smart AS says you can be off now. I'll just use the manual control. So nitrous oxide usage, not bad. We are carrying quite a lot of it. All right. Uh, well, we're planning to recover these goo containers. Let's observe biosample. Okay, we're going to keep that data from the upper atmosphere, and then once we get into space, we'll do the other one. Pretty good so far. But then there's the whole coming back down thing. Okay. And that's from space. Fruit flies are observed and determined that mating is possible without gravity. Okay. We'll have to remember to cut the engine 15 uh, seconds short or something like that. Because uh, we're testing it at this at this velocity, right, uh, at this apoapsis. If we try and burn out that uh, RD-103 engine, we'll be coming down much faster, and that won't be the same sort of situation, so gotta do it the same way if this survives. Of course, if this doesn't survive, it's a moot point. Let's see, uh, info on this. Pre-deployment altitude might be a little bit high, actually. Uh, how about uh, 0.3 atmospheres? Let's go with that. Okay. Copy to other shoots. I think that'll be safer. I think I'm just going to arm the parachutes now. Should uh, verify that uh, this is the same. Yeah, okay. Our probe core doesn't hold retrograde. But smart ASS can, once we get a retrograde marker here. Nitrous oxide seems fine. Still working. Still got a little bit of a oscillating motion, unfortunately. Okay, let's go retrograde. Ooh, overdid it, overdid it, overdid it, overdid it. Ah, uh, well, the lead ballast should eventually get us right anyway. That is, oh, we've got a huge difference between orbital retrograde and surface retrograde. Okay. Um, oh, uh, SVL negative should be right, right? Anyway, I'll, I'll fire him now. I don't think we'll need them for touchdown or splashdown. Probably a little bit dangerous to fire them then, anyway. So, uh, firing the second volley. Okay. Still got plenty of nitrous oxide to hold us steady. Lead ballast should be keeping the center of mass there. Of course, there's a natural aerodynamic tendency to go pointy end first. We're hoping that what I've got going with the lead and the nitrous oxide will prevent that from happening. Oh, the nitrous oxide is working. Let's see the G-forces. Oh, too high. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah, well, that's inadvisable, I think. It's going so well, too. I don't suppose... Oh, uh, no, no, that's not right. Uh... 
The goo containers. I want to see the goo containers. Are they still attached to anything useful? Ooh. Come on, where's the goo? Oh! Actually, um... The cockpit still has a parachute. I'm actually legitimately more concerned about the goo right now, but, uh... Let's go back to the cockpit, at least maybe it'll work out for it. I should show us two parachutes, but I've only got one here. Where's Where did the other one go? It probably fell off. So, uh, procedural real fuels tank failed due to aerodynamic stresses. And the capsules fell off. So it's aerodynamics, um, yeah, looks like aerodynamics is the problem. So we need something a little bit more forceful to slow us down, clearly. Too much g-forces on the way down, and we can do that. Uh, we left some fuel in the rocket itself. So maybe if we uh, added a much more robust retrofire package, that would solve both problems. I mean, in other words, we'll burn out the RD-103 stage because we're carrying a heavier mass up top. And that heavier mass will actually be the retrofire package. Well, it looks like it uh, it's good with just one parachute. No, no problem with uh, having just one parachute three meters per second, very gentle. Um, well, the cockpit is sort of survived. I don't know... Okay, well this is just weird. Let's recover if we can. Can we? Can we? Maybe not. How about if I zoom out? No? I think it'll just be counted as debris if I don't manage to recover it right now. But it's not got any control, it's just spinning around. Oh! So, in conclusion, the cockpit survived, but uh, I don't think we can call that safe. Well, we got eight signs for recovery of a vessel after a suborbital flight, and, uh, well, we got the cockpit back, as, as uh, I said. Quite a bit further away from the KSC than I thought. Um, yeah, I think maybe maybe this is still reading the wrong place for the KSC. Because I don't think we were 2,000 miles away. Hmm. So that's a problem. Because we're not going to get good uh, recovery value from getting it back here otherwise. But let's take a look at the tech tree. We've got 25 signs. Okay, so what I really want is, well, here here we've got the heat shields. Maybe that'll help with recovery. Here we've got, I think we've, we're, we're already unlocking this. What I really need is down here with the solar panels. But I can't get to that yet. Until this finishes researching. I think we're, we are researching this, right? Yeah. Okay, maybe I should just hold on to the science and wait and oh, uh, it's just 40 for this. Okay, so uh, we'll wait and uh, gather up 40 science so we can unlock that after that has finished. Well, in the world of these contracts, ooh, uncrewed record of 700 kilometers with just one meter. But is that no? That's less than one. That's a tenth of a meter on there. I don't know why, but okay. Um, but, yeah, I think we, we can do the break the sound barrier, but we don't get much for that. It's not worthwhile unless we take this contract as well, so we'll wait. Well, let's go on with the, with the regular favorites, a Capable 3B and then a Nick 5. While we're rolling out the Capable 3B, I'm going to build and queue up a Lofty 2, which is an improved version of the Lofty 1. Okay, so the improvements I've made are these. We have five 
XASRs at the bottom of here and so they're going to give a little boost now they do need the fuel to be settled down so I still have the little uh, snowtrons what what do they actually call them here uh, separation motor smalls and so they're going to help settle the fuel down because uh, of course when we're descending uh, the fuel is going to end up at the top of the tank I'm sure there's gonna be a fuel feed problem with that so yeah um, the lead ballast is still here because once we well, once we get done with the fuel, we'll still need this end to be heavy enough to... Uh, but we don't need that much. Hold on, let me uh, show you why. I think uh, we had 70 units last time. So let me change that to 70 units. And we will have the re remainder be additional fuel for the Arabies. But yeah, so then the Arabies will fire. Hopefully that'll work out. If not, I'm going to have to strap on some baby sergeants or something like that. I just noticed that we have Guidance Unit starting here instead of Guidance Unit early. There's no particular reason for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, the starting one is even costing more, so let's remove this and get the early one on instead. That'll make it cheaper. Oh, so uh, we are sort of close to the line here, 28 tons and all, uh, because I've added the additional mass of all this stuff. So the 45 ton capacity of this is probably a little bit safer. Uh, you see I put struts, I've angled these thrusters out, I've reduced the amount of nitrous oxide here from about 40,000 to 27,000, and uh, so these are angled out because of the tank here of course. Yep, so that's basically it. We'll, we'll see how this works out. Again, uncrewed. Okay, so here we are again with the capable 3B. And again, it's pretty tight to orbit on this one. Uh, we do have four boosters. And on the bright side, that at least means we're going to get some test flight progress on the boosters. So where are we test flight? And it looks like uh, even after the updates, it's still not reading the Vanguard. The Vanguard is actually in the second stage. Reading the Vanguard as an engine it needs to take care of. As you can see, with the AJ-1037s, we've only got uh, 7,443 data units. Uh, we can get a maximum of 10,000. So whatever happens, we'll be improving on the quality of those engines. Alright, throttle is up, SAS is on. Let's see if they light. Uh, one didn't. Well, isn't that the story? Are you gonna catch up to this? It's your fault. Okay, well now it's caught, sort of caught up. Shouldn't it be reading more data units as we go along? Okay, it's updating a little bit slowly. Yeah, we're getting more data units on the remaining engines, so I guess I'll leave it be. Exceed the level that we had before, and then uh, cut it off. I could probably save cash by shutting this one down at least. Okay, we've exceeded the data units we already had on the engines, so I'll just let them burn out. Okay, not a huge jump, but I'll take it. Let's recover this. Okay, funds recovered. Now, it says at the launch pad, it says 100%, so it's measuring the launch pad right. But then, when we get to only within spitting distance of the launch pad to the east, it says we're 2,000 miles away, so I don't know. It's weird. Okay, as we roll the Nick 5 out, I'm gonna check how much time we have left to the contract. Yep, still a year and 153 days, so I'm not going to rush things. Got to be sanguine about our failures, I think. Explain slow. Can I even build something for 377? I wonder. Okay, well I guess it is possible to make a plane with, uh, with less than 377 credits or funds, and that's mainly because the Bonanza Cabin costs less than 12, and the the main jet engine that we've got, the Derwent 5, 
costs only 18. Now, beyond that, I have some problems. You'll notice I don't have a vertical stabilizer here, and that's because no configuration of vertical stabilizer seems to satisfy FAR. You see here, this is uh, yaw right angular acceleration, and it comes. Uh, this is yaw, this is yaw stuff, and that's all stuff to do with the vertical stabilizer, and no matter what I try to do, uh, whether I'm using the procedural ones or uh, even a basic fin on the tail or one of these, let, let me show you, I'll just slap one of these on. It, it just uh, makes it worse. Uh, sorry, I didn't... Uh, oh, this is the old number, and then, well, that makes it marginally better, but not, not good enough considering it's going very slowly. Uh, could and of course the bo the way the body is arranged here doesn't make it easy. I've tried to put the uh, a wingtip sort of configuration. I've tried doing a V tail. Uh, I've tried a number of different possibilities here, but uh, yeah, I know the body is a little bit awkward for this sort of thing. But yeah, so this isn't working out quite right. But there's another problem, and I think it might be contributing to... Oh, okay, go away. Um, contributing to my issues, and that is this. Why is the center mass back there? It's not because of the engine. The engine is 0.57. The cockpit is 0.53. So you, you'd expect it to be... Well, actually, I put the wing exactly where it was originally, but something has caused it to move back. Uh, very randomly, suddenly... I, I don't know what change I made that irritated the center of mass reading. I mean, now, if I take off the engine, it, it goes over here, which is obviously also wrong. And uh, if you want to be even more confused, so yeah, it does that. But then I take this off, the center mass ends up there. Hmm. Right. So, yeah, I think I'm going to have to hold off on trying this out for a while. Until I can figure out how to get the numbers right. Wouldn't take long to build it, actually, uh, if we... Oh, uh, actually, it will take long, because the build time in the SPH is very slow. Hmm. Okay, but yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, keep this off to the side and work on it some other time. Instead of fretting about that, let's go with the NIC-5 rollout. I'm, I don't have a second rocket building yet. I'm hoping that the NIC-5 will do the job for orbit finally. Well, here we go. Throw this up. SAS is on. Everything is ready, get some distance, and go. Let me check, uh, oh, smoke screen is back up to 8,000 particles. Let's drop that down a little bit. Okay, getting ready for booster set. And booster's off. Okay. Game okay, gonna leave it at 50 degrees. Uh, Smart SS off, SAS on, RCS on. Set. And we have a good light on the AJ 10 stage. Let's uh, make sure that executes. Okay. All right, so we continue. So I think I'm gonna go for just two degrees up angle before, I mean, at the end of this stage to prepare for the next stage. We'll try and get the apoapsis as high as possible beforehand, of course. Again, we're aiming for a 150 kilometer periapsis is the trick. Okay, let, let me go to three degrees then. 
Don't know how it'll work, but we've been through this before. Okay, set. Spin and ignition. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think it was enough up angle. I think it was too shallow this time. Yeah, we're too low. Well, at least it's angled up right now. I don't think it'll do enough though. We'll see. Okay, well, it's got vertical speed going up now, but we've only got 25 seconds left. Could work. Might not work. Oh, weird camera flip. Oh, no. No, no. <sighs> yeah, and it's because uh, we didn't actually get to it in time. You can't get 150 kilometer periapsis if you're at 139 kilometers, obviously. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Um, 700 kilometers it looks like we have to get to. Okay. Why do we have... Oh! We have a thermometer and barometer on the bottom of those even though we don't need them. We should probably remove those. That's because uh, this was adapted from a previous vessel. Okay, so we got the 700 kilometer, well, 700.0001 kilometer contract done. I'm not going to get a speed record with this. wonder how it arrow breaks. Oh, uh, we got... Oh, well, it doesn't. That was early, wasn't it? Did it really explode at 119 kilometers? That's pretty severe. Oh, so we got another contract for 800 kilometers. Okay, I'll take that as a bonus. You know, I just noticed uh, this is using the guidance unit starting as well instead of the guidance unit early. We should switch to the guidance unit early. That should save some mass. Yep. Now let's get rid of those two instruments that we don't need at the bottom of this stage. Okay, how long does it really take to build one of these? 11 days? Okay. Um, have we made enough changes to call it Nick 6? I think it'd be, be a good idea to just call it Nick 6. Alright, save and build, let's say 2. And you know, to pay for the Nix, I can continue to do height records. Clearly they can get, if they fail, they're going to get to a pretty high height. And it looks like we get enough funds to actually pay for them in that case. So that's a plus. I think I'm going to move this Nick up and we'll try that. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, get some distance, ignition, and launch. And launch. Decided not to catch my space bar the first time. Okay, booster set. Boosters are clear. Okay, we'll go at 60 degrees. Smart ASS off, SAS on. RCS on. Set. Ignition is good. Oh, okay. Very good. Oh dear. Uh, where did the nitrous oxide go? Did I... I think I accidentally removed the nitrous oxide tank. Ah, oh, crud. Okay. Uh, the nitrous oxide tank was so thin, I must have removed it with the guidance unit when I replaced the guidance unit. Shoot. Well, we're going for another height record. Oh 
Looks like fairing separation like this is okay. Well, that doesn't look like it's high enough, so next stage. Okay, that's that. What kind of record do we need? Uh, 900 kilometers. Okay. Okay, we got that. Did we get another one? Doesn't look like it. But let's go up and head back down and see if it, another one pops up. Because last time we got another one. Maybe it's just a matter of time. There's a delay between the contracts popping up. And if we spend enough time out here, another one will emerge. Yeah, there we go. It was just a matter of time. And so we got a thousand kilometers. Let's just see. Well, now we're below a thousand kilometers. Okay, I don't want to watch this burn up. It's going to be loud. Well, I uh, got a good bunch of funds for that. Let's edit the the NIC-6 here. Since it doesn't have the nitrous oxide tanks on, uh, tank either. So nitrous oxide. And I think we had about 2,000 units. And you can see why I might have missed the tank. We could use this upper stage engine. It is an upgrade version of the of the AJ-10 we're currently using. It actually has not much more thrust. Its sea level ISP is worse. Vacuum ISP is better. It has multiple ignitions. Metal cost us to unlock it. I doubt it's going to be cheaper. Maybe maybe gimbling will work on it. Uh, it looks like for this one, they've assumed that we've done all the test flight stuff and so it'll be alright. I don't know. Uh, test flight should be still configured for it, but it doesn't show up. This Agena engine is purely vacuum, it looks like. It also should be configured for test flight, but doesn't have the stuff showing up. This one is also heavier than this one. Yeah, I'll just keep to the one that we've got. Probably for the best. Okay, please let this work this time. SAS on, throttle is up. And ignition. And launch. I guess I'll clean up this stuff on the way up. Booster set. Not quite as high pitched as last time. Okay, let's say yes on. RCS on. Set. Ignition. Okay, ignition is good and nitrous oxide is being used, so that's good. We'll go for the same pitch as before, but we've got a different trajectory now. Okay. Okay, set. And ignition. Fairing set. Okay, I'm gonna wait a little bit. Okay, set, ignition, okay, come on, okay, 
Dang it. Well, three degrees was too much this time. Oh well, uh, let's uh, let's get uh, what was the height record here now? Oh, we don't have another height record thing. Okay, so we've run out of those finally. Okay. Okay, so one more day to completion of the Lofty 2. On the previous Nick 6 launch, if I had waited till after Apoapsis a little bit before firing the last stage, probably would have worked out a little bit better. Anyway, throttle up, SAS on. Well, okay. Don't know how this is gonna work out. Should be interesting. Ignition and launch. All right, we're off. Still got those goo containers. We want to see if we can recover those. We're getting the wigglies again. It seems to be when when it goes through transonic speeds starts up. Okay, uh, the cockpit is still overheating at this point. I don't have the thermal data up though. But then it cools down. Yeah, actually the cockpit itself cools down. So I guess that's okay. No, it still seems like we could add extra mass to this thing. We'll take it to 200 kilometers again. Okay, nine seconds extra this time. Okay, separation. Ooh, good thing I didn't uh, try pressing spacebar again. Okay, uh, RCS and forward. Okay, very good. I have uh, SAS on now. So we're just gonna do the experiments again. Okay, bat showed little to, to no sign of trying to write itself. Okay, we'll keep that data. Poor bat, I guess the bat bit the dust last time. Okay, and now the space sample. Alright, fruit flies again. Okay, well, you know how the rest is gonna be. Well, I want so much, it's not surface info, it's more like landing. We've got 30 seconds of fuel, I think. So I'd like to, the time to impact. Well, once it gets itself oriented properly, I'll try to use the retro rockets and all. Oh, I should uh, make the same changes to the parachutes that I did last time. So pressure... Boy, this... I better do that in the VAB, otherwise I might forget for the crewed mission. Copy to other chutes, close. I'm gonna arm these. Okay, as we hit the atmosphere, I'll say Retro 1, Retro 2, and fire. Still gonna be accelerated. Let me throttle down. We don't need uh, all that effort for retrograde. We want our attitude jets to be maintaining our attitude. Come on, smart ASS, do your thing. Jeez. Well, we'll hit the atmosphere soon enough. 
Well, we lost a lot of velocity there. That's good. We're gaining velocity again now, which is probably bad. But expected. It's not so much the heating, it's the aerodynamics. So that's something we have to think about. Just don't want to be going too fast when we hit the atmosphere. It's possible I should have waited longer before doing the whole retro thing. Well, we're going to find out. Still going faster, we're descending below 40 kilometers. Still accelerating. Okay, we stopped accelerating. We're slowing down now. 30 kilometers. Those attitude jets aren't going to work very well this low. So let's hope that the air will take care of it. Still high g-forces, 1000 meters per second, below 20 kilometers. It's trying to flip over, it looks like. But pretty mild, uh, below 7 g's, looks like. Attitude jets aren't very good in the atmosphere, of course. We are below the speed of sound. Below 10 kilometers. And the parachutes are out. Parachute deployment successful. Well, let's see if any bits fall off when we impact the water, of course. That would be a problem. Things exploding randomly as we smack into the sea. Oh, we can analyze telemetry while flying over Earth's shores. We'll just keep that. Okay, full parachute deployment. Okay, parachutes have fully deployed. Bringing us to 4.5 meters per second because this is heavier of course uh, we don't just have the cockpit we have a bunch of lead okay it's bobbing it's flopping but it flops gently it looks like oh but it's got this problem let's turn off the RCS maybe that's causing it to be unsettled Okay, uh, I don't want to go to Space Center. Uh, oh. Okay, Lofty 2 splash down, recover. Yep. Okay, so we've got the experiments back. Yep, we got the science for those. Telemetry analysis is good. Curry vessel from suborbital flight. Very good. Still only 83% of our funds back, but we did get that. Okay, well, that is interesting. And uh, let's go to the tech tree. Right, now we have science for this. Let's say I research that. It will unlock in infinity. Hmm. Let me check that that's going to unlock in something less than infinity. That's sort of important. Um. Oh, okay, uh... Hmm. I thought it used to be able to run two different research projects at the same time. Now it can't? Okay, well, at least it can tick. So, 217 days. Well, it's gonna take a while. But yeah, let's get the other one queued up. So, uh, not, not so infinite as it uh, thinks. But then we can uh, queue this one up, which has the solar panels here. As well as other interesting things. I don't know if much of this is... Well, there's visual observations, so that's another science thing. So, okay, we've got some more science coming our way like this. Let's research that as well. That'll take 634 days. Okay, so that is that spent. And so on the, I guess, successful test of the, of the Lofty 2, 
I should probably call it a day. At least we got a success under our belt. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.